Good morning. It's a pleasure to, uh, well, I'd like to say it's a pleasure to be with you, but we really aren't, are we? It's a pleasure to be able to preparing, be preparing this to share with you. And uh, as it has become clear that we're going to be at this for a while, the stay at home order goes into effect Monday. Uh, if there is anything that I can do to uh, help uh, these videos work better for you um, and if that means give me a phone call and I'll, I can help you set up a computer uh, or uh, how to get this video on your TV whatever uh, you'd like to consider let, let me know and I'll do what I can uh, we will not be gathering for Easter we had made plans to be able to do a drive-in for Easter I had the logistics worked out I was looking forward to that and the stay-at-home order means that we will not be able to gather we need to stay at home and so we are going to respect that honor that uh, directive from the governor uh, if you have any questions about how we're going forward as a church just just let me know uh, today we have a reading done by uh, Lisa please uh, let's listen to Lisa read to us out of the gospel according to Luke Luke 19 29 through 38 as he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Say, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. As Jesus rides into Jerusalem, there are all sorts of people around him. There are people that are along, around him that are just there for the ride. Like they, everyone's heading to Jerusalem for the Passover, and so they're going along, and they get caught up in, in, in wow, there's something happening over here. Let's go and see what it is. There are people who are around Jesus who, uh, they know something about him. Maybe they've heard him speak once. Maybe they've heard about him, and, and they're, they're they know something's happening and they have a sense of who he is there are people who would have been around jesus waving palms celebrating what's happening that knew a lot about jesus that had heard him speak multiple times and they followed him and they really want to know uh, where he's going then there are the disciples who have followed him for three years and they are, they know all about who jesus is and then at the center of this group is Jesus himself, in the middle of this swirl of all these different folks with different levels of understanding of what's going on. And it is true they all would have had various levels of understanding. The people are sort of along the ride, are they're hearing about who Jesus is for the first time from the other people around him. Oh, who is this person we're celebrating? It seems to be this guy named Jesus. And then there were the people who, who were, knew more about Jesus, had more of a sense that he's going to Jerusalem, he's going to the, the capital, uh, he's the son of David entering Jerusalem, that there's, there could be something that's going to happen there. And uh, then there are the disciples who know that something is going to happen there because Jesus has been, t has been telling them again and again that this is going to be challenging. This world of people with uh, all waving palms, all in, in doing the same thing, yet all bringing various levels of understanding to the event. It, it does strike me as being somewhat like a crowd of people watching the Super Bowl. Some people are thoroughly invested in the teams and they know everything about them. Some people are there for the commercials. Some people don't even know who's playing until they sit down with their chips and dip. Oh, who's the team in the red jerseys? Huh. Is that a football team? Like, <laughs> there's just this huge variety of people coming to this, this same event, all sitting around this same screen. 
No matter what the people were thinking, though, uh, in the same way that you know, everyone sits down in the Super Bowl and they understand it's a big event, everyone going up to Jerusalem with uh, Jesus know that this is going to be a big event. It is the yearly celebration of Passover, the, the feast that marks how uh, God has brought the people out of slavery from Egypt and started leading them towards the promised land, making them, uh, choosing them so that they are the chosen people, making them into God's people. And so they, they know, everyone knows something is going to happen. Uh, everyone knows this is an exciting moment. They just don't quite know why or how uh, with, with Jesus being involved. And so I can't help but have a bit of sympathy for the disciples, right? Because the disciples in the middle of this, they're the ones who know a lot. They know that Jesus has told them that, uh, as the, for three times now, Jesus has told them, I'm going to go into Jerusalem and I will be uh, arrested and it's going to get ugly. And this is part of... Uh, this is part of, of this sort of trend, like they've been following Jesus for three years, but recently things have been getting a little bit uh, tense. Like they've had dinner with Mary and Martha, but that didn't exactly go as they had hoped. They had, uh, Jesus had condemned the Pharisees, and that, that's getting into dangerous waters. And, and Jesus that has lamented over Jerusalem as, as the city that stones the prophets and those that God sends to Jerusalem. And, and so the disciples, they're the the ones who they they know what's they know something of what's what's coming uh reading about this moment this week thinking about all the various types of people surrounding jesus as they enter into jerusalem this does reflect my week this week, uh, various levels of understanding, various levels of tension, various levels of confusion. That's been my week talking to people. I've been talking to people from the people who I've called. I've been on the phone a lot this week. Right? I have talked to people who are doing just fine. They're just getting along. They're not bothered by anything right now. They're just taking care of what, what's in front of them. I have talked to people that are just a little bit worried, but they check, check the news once a day. They're doing, they're doing fine. I've talked to people who are really worried, who have loved ones that are involved in health care, who have uh, loved ones who are sick. I I've talked to people this week that have had loved ones die and, and, and are arranging funerals. Um, I've talked to a pastor over on the East Coast whose town is on complete lockdown after uh, COVID-19 is entered the town and now over 30 people are sick and um, a, a pastor ha has died. And so just knowing all these various people I've talked to this week, the busy and the bored, the worry and the calm, the worried and the calm, the struggling and the trusting, uh, we are a very mixed crowd, we are. We're a very mixed community, both here as uh, Shelbina and as the bigger community. In the midst of this, in the midst of this, all different people having different experiences of this moment, we as Christians proclaim that there is a light on the horizon. We are going into Holy Week, and at the other end of Holy Week is Easter. Easter is coming whether we are gathered in the pews to celebrate it or not. Easter is coming, and we can depend upon that with the same trust that we can have that the sun will rise tomorrow. For we proclaim that indeed the sun will rise. We will have to get through Good Friday, the darkest night of the year, to get to this. And it might be that Good Friday feels particularly dark this year. But the sun will rise. And we can hold on to that as we look at the last person that we have not, the one person we haven't looked at in this procession up to Jerusalem. We haven't looked at Jesus. And Jesus is there and he is leading the procession and he is full of joy himself. Like it's the, the scripture tells us that people are, are full of joy and excitement as they're around Jesus. And no one has joy around someone who's being a buzzkill. Like Jesus was full of joy. The crowd is full of joy and Jesus is heading into uh, this week and it's a joy that Jesus has that is shining not in spite of Good Friday that's not the case the joy that Jesus has is not in spite of Good Friday it does not deny that the cross is there but instead shines through it 
On Palm Sunday, Jesus is celebrating, for he is the son of David, entering David's city, the Messiah, the anointed one, the one who is leading the people into a new future. Pro prophecies are being fulfilled. The glory of God is being made clear. Right? And so this is a moment of joy. And, and that's what Palm Sunday is, right? This time to practice joy. This joy that happens not in spite of, but through whatever it is that is in front of us. Palm Sunday is a time of joy as we remember that joy is not naive. Joy does not deny the trials that Jesus has coming, nor does it deny the pain that is in his past. For us to follow Jesus in being joyful does not mean that we have to deny the brokenness or the pain that we have experienced or that might be in front of us. Joy does not play down our struggles or minimize our concerns. Joy does not mean being a Pollyanna, being happy somehow, maniacally happy in the face of pain. Joy does not mean ignoring what is not right and pretending that everything is just going to work out just fine any second now and there's not a problem to be faced. That's not what joy is. Joy is what we see in Jesus as he rides into the future that's in front of him, knowing that there might be a good Friday to come, and in Jesus' case, he does know this. But joy is rooted in trusting God, the Father, who is on the other side of whatever it is that's going to come. Joy trusts that in the end, all will be made right. Joy like this is a fruit of the Spirit, something that flows from living as a disciple of Jesus, being rooted in a relationship with God that is deep. Joy that trusting God to walk with us is something we can do daily, and God will walk with us through this day and into the future, knowing that we never walk alone, for God is good all of the time, that God is always working for the good of those who follow him. And so I invite you today to have joy, to practice receiving joy, to rejoice, taking joy and knowing that God will walk with us today and tomorrow and each day to come. Not that each day will be perfect, but knowing that in the end we follow a perfect God who will lead us to perfection, the kingdom which is to come. I invite you to take joy and just, here's what I, want, I invite you to do. Just keep on humming this thing today. Something you know and I know we've known for a long time. We know that he's got the whole world in his hands. 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 Hold on to that. That's the root of our joy. He's got the whole world in his hands. And it's going to be good. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you lead us once more into Holy Week, not in foreboding, not with a concern for what will come on Friday, but looking confidently towards Easter. And with this confidence, having joy. We pray that we might be filled with this same joy, the joy of knowing that on the other side of Friday is always Sunday. On the other side of crucifixion is always resurrection. On the other side of this virus and the isolation it causes is going to be celebration and gathering and feasting. Sustained by this joy, may we face each day as a gift. May we accept each day as an opportunity to love and to serve and to trust that you are ultimately in control. We pray for those who during this time are suffering. We pray for those who are continuing to work. We pray for those who serve the sick. We pray for anyone who is at, in the at-risk population. We especially pray for those who have lost loved ones as they are not able to gather with family and friends to celebrate and remember as we usually do. We specifically pray for the family of Wayne Niederauer. Finally, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. 
Please let me know of any prayer requests that come up during this week. There will be videos posted on Thursday and Friday for Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. Uh, they will have videos posted for Easter. Uh, and uh, I think that's our plan right now. Please stay safe and let me know if there's anything that uh, we can do, anything you need. Uh, deliver groceries, drop off food, um, whatever you need. You let us know. Peace be with you. Amen.